Okay, so it is 5.29 a.m. Wednesday, March 24th here in Japan. Total fucking crackhead right now, okay? But nevertheless, I would rather just have some minimal degree or ostensible degree of productivity. So we're just going to improvise and bust through this question as opposed to not doing anything, all right? That's my intro. Let's uh, get into this now. 73-year-old woman, she's got an eight-month history of urinary incontinence. She feels the need to run to the bathroom when getting out of her car or when sticking the key in the front door of her house. This is a very buzzy phrase, truthfully, these descriptors uh, for urge incontinence, all right? So classic screening questions when you're assessing someone's incontinence. Uh, do you have an urge to run to the bathroom when you're sticking the key in the door of your house or in the door of your car or when you're simply getting out of your car? Sounds weird, I know, uh, but those are questions that can assess for urge incontinence. She has osteoarthritis and hypertension, and she's on acetaminophen and nifedipine, and then we're simply just asking for the explanation or the mechanism for her incontinence. We're just going to uh, look at these answer choices. We'll go backwards here. So pelvic floor weakness, wrong fucking answer. This refers to stress incontinence, okay? So classic just classic uh, vignettes as far as history of multiple childbirths uh, can weaken the pelvic floor muscles. They might say uh, in the vignette that there's downward mobility of the vesico-urethral junction. I've seen that on Obsky and forms. Uh, but pelvic floor weakness, uh, classically stress incontinence, uh, so... Uh, incontinence with laughing, coughing, sneezing, okay, pretty typical. And we treat with pelvic floor exercises, so Kegel exercises, all right? Um, if Kegel exercises are insufficient, sometimes in surgery forms, they can have mid-urethral sling as a second uh, method of treatment. The point being that anticholinergic medications such as oxybutynin are wrong fucking answers and that's a very, that is your high yield point when it comes to stress incontinence. Okay, obviously this is not stress incontinence, but I'm just saying don't be giving oxybutynin or which is a muscarinic receptor antagonist at the detrusor muscle or uh, mirabegrin, which is a beta-3 agonist. That can also be used for urge incontinence. We're not medicating people who have stress incontinence, okay? It's just going to be Kegel exercises, pelvic floor exercises, followed by <clears throat> mid-urethral sling. Uh, the other answer, the next answer, overflow incontinence, also wrong. Okay, so this could be for a number of etiologies as far as BPH. So we have outflow obstruction, which could be BPH as well, right? But outflow obstruction can lead to overflow incontinence. Um, overflow incontinence can also be due to uh, neurogenic bladder, usually diabetes. If they want that as an answer, they're going to tell you someone has a decreased pinpoint sensation up to the knees, someone with bad uh, HbA1c level, like in the nine percentage, and they're pointing at bad diabetes. And you say, okay, well, what kind of incontinence would I expect in diabetes? Overflow incontinence. They could have hypo, not hyper, hypo contractile detrusor for overflow, overflow incontinence as well. If diabetes is the etiology, we can try bethanicol. It's a muscarinic receptor agonist, okay? Uh, which will stimulate the detrusor muscle. So the opposite of oxybutynin. Don't fuck these drugs up, all right? Oxybutynin, uh, that's going to be used for urge incontinence. Okay, mirabegrin for urge incontinence, uh, but bethanicol for overflow incontinence if it's due to a neurogenic origin such as diabetes. If we have BPH causing the overflow incontinence, uh, we would simply just treat the BPH, okay? So we could use uh, alpha-1 antagonists such as tamsulose and terazosin. Uh, they will loosen the internal sphincter of the bladder, all right? And you can obviously use finasteride and just do a terp if you have to, transurethral over section of the prostate. Choice C, this is a distractor, effective medication. You say, ooh, wow, she's on nifedipine. Like, that's a calcium channel blocker. Couldn't that fuck with the bladder? Some of the literature says that nifedipine can increase the propensity for overflow incontinence, okay? The association is weak. Uh, apparently, there have been studies showing that pressure within the bladder does not change with nifedipine or the calcium channel blockers, the, di the dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers, but that residual volume can slightly increase. And so if anything, nifedipine could cause overflow incontinence, but that's not what this uh, vignette is describing, okay? The association's weak with the with that agent. I should also, I, I did mention overflow incontinence for a second. If the question does want that as the diagnosis, they'll tell you the residual volume sometimes 300 or 400 milliliters. Like you'll get someone with diabetes or BPH that has three, three to 400 milliliters residual volume. Normal should be about under 50, okay? If you get a question where it's 75, 
it's not fucking overflow and condense, all right? Most of the time, it's just normal should be about under 50. And if they if they want overflow and condense, they'll give you three or 400 uh, milliliters. Choice B, dyssynergia. When students don't know uh, a diagnosis slash answer, they tend to choose weird sounding shit. Bladder neck dyssynergia just refers to a discoordination or an incoordination between the detrusor contraction and the relaxation of the sphincters, okay? Causes such as spinal cord injury, multiple sclerosis, okay? Can also be uh, associated with other um, problems such as encopresis, which means shitting your pants. I'm not joking right now, okay? So uh, that can be associated, but it's just a distractor here. Choice A, detrusor instability. This is our correct answer. Detrusor instability, detrusor hyperactivity. This is... Uh, overflow, sorry, this is uh, urge incontinence, okay? And uh, we are going to treat this with, as I mentioned, oxybutynin, our muscarinic receptor antagonist, or mirabegrin, our beta-3 agonist, all right? Classically, multiple sclerosis. And this can get very fucking confusing because uh, some resources will say multiple sclerosis is overflow incontinence. I can tell you, it's not my opinion, okay? I can tell you my observations across the NBME exams and uh, the clinical mastery series forms for 2CK, the obskine, they love multiple sclerosis and urge incontinence, not overflow incontinence. Now, if you got a multiple sclerosis question and they literally tell you that there's a residual volume of 400 milliliters, like you have to use your fucking head. And yes, that would be overflow incontinence in theory. But I can just tell you that my observation, I've seen multiple sclerosis with urge incontinence. That's repeated, okay? So, um, urge incontinence can also be seen perimenopausal. All right, so it can be a, fact, a result of severe vasomotor symptoms. So when you get hot flushes, you can get vaginal dryness, okay? So uh, trophic vaginitis, you can also get um, urge incontinence, all right? And I already mentioned multiple sclerosis, and it can just be idiopathic and elderly classically, okay? If you got a 32-year-old woman with urge incontinence, you might want to think multiple sclerosis, okay? Or just elderly, okay, idiopathic perimenopausal, just part of the uh, the menopause transition, of course. So that's it for this concise clip, okay? We're not going to make this a 47-minute uh, obsgyny discussion, all right? Obviously going to make more content. Uh, so if you liked this, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.